Welcome to Buddhas in Your Landfill, or Buddhism Just Plain and Simple. It's a beautiful Saturday morning here in Blackstone, the center of the world, but then you too are at the center of the world. So let's talk about that center. Uh, we've been, we've been uh, over the last, oh, my talks lately have been centered around uh, seeing the world as a wheel instead of a ruler. Uh, the Western world looks at reality in a, as a ruler, a linear ruler that you measure in time, where life is measured out in seconds, minutes, hours, time, centuries, decades, millenniums, all of that. But it's a ruler, past and future, you see. But we want to look at the world as the ancients looked at the world, as the East looks at the world, as a wheel. So we've been talking about um, man on the rim and man at the center. And the Western world we live in, the paradigm of reality, the mythos, the fishbowl we live in, is that of duality. Everything is, comes in twos, like on Noah's Ark. Everything comes in a pair, up, down, in, out, black, white, right, wrong, you can't separate them. You can't separate up from down, hot from cold. You can't have all up unless you're Trump. You can't, <laughs> you can't have win without losing or losing without winning. But we like to separate them. All positive. Think positive. No negative. Don't think negative. Think positive. Just have positive thoughts. Pollyanna, I think that's the name for that. Just be positive. Just be happy. Well, there's a truth to that and there's not a truth to that. But anyway, the idea we're looking at is that we're on a wheel. Stop the world, I want to get off. We're on a, uh, uh, I forgot to set my clock again. I'll set it like that. Uh, we live in a clock, like we, like arms moving around. We know, oh, what time is it? It's this, of course, you know, so we, we're hanging from this thing. Uh, when you graduate, my, my father got this. When he graduated from Annapolis, his grandmother gave it to him. It's got his name on the back, an Elgin pocket watch. I had it restored. I love this. I just use it for my talks, so I have father time. <laughs> so, so I'm in control of my time here. Um, you wind it, you know, I'm not in it, I'm controlling it. So anyway, I digress. <clears throat> the point is that we've been looking at the wheel uh, from the side, and in the modern world, there's no center to you. You're not, your center is not on the map. It's always in the future. So we're going from past to future, and we're just getting over the present moment as fast as we can because there's nothing here really of interest. It's kind of boring. The good stuff is in the future, or it's in the past and we're getting away from it. We're either going towards the good stuff or getting away from the bad stuff. But the moment, present moment is just something where our wheel is rolling over. We can't stop there because the good stuff's in the future. The promised land's in the future. Or we want to restore the past. Restore America. Our best is in the past. <clears throat> or it's in the future. But either way, whichever, whichever way you look at it, we're still rolling over the present moment. Can't get out, hurry to get, I gotta get home, I gotta get there, I gotta get to the next moment. Will you, everything, if you look at it that way, we can't just be here in the present moment because our self is on the rim of the clock. So we'll just erase this and Like a clock, you see. So now the wheel is a clock. And we're running in time. And we're wearing out. Now when the Buddha left the pleasure, pleasure palace and went into town, this is the mythology of the Buddha, and he leaves his pleasure palace where he's been protected, his palace of pleasure, which is where we live, America is Buddha's pleasure palace. We live in a comfort palace air conditioning, lights, heat, 
Everything is just right. And if it gets a little bit off, we're very disturbed. If it's just uh, five degrees too warm or too cool, uh, this shouldn't be this way. Anyway. But the Buddha went to the town and he saw an old person, he saw sickness and he saw death. And he had an existential crisis in the same way that when the doctor calls you and says, I'm sorry, but you got a lump. That's what the Buddha experienced. Again, speaking, this is metaphorical speaking. So it was an existential crisis of mortality and time. And old age sickness and death is a metaphor for time, for living in time, for living for future. And then as we get older, we have less and less future. And we begin to despair. I don't have enough time left. I need more time. You see, where did it all go? Where did the time go? Here I am, 81 years old. Where did the time go? I don't have much more time. People start dying in the 80s. <laughs> I could be next. My mother lived to be 102. So I'm just still sucking my stump. <laughs> but I got 20 more, I got 20 more years of Facebook of talking to you. <laughs> so, but anyway, when she was around 100, we were in the car talking and uh, I think we we're talking about happiness and she said you know why I'm happy and I said why mom and she said because I have no future and I stopped there's a pause and then she said when I was younger I had a future and I wasn't so happy but she really was as she got older she got more present she became more welcoming she became more here she would say well concerning her body if the doctor can fix it, I get it fixed. But if I can't, I accept it. So I accept the present moment. If I can't leave it or fix it, if I mean, I, you know, if something's wrong, fix it. If you can't, accept it. I have tinnitus ringing in my ears. Can't be fixed. I accept it. I haven't heard it all morning until right now. Now I hear it. <laughs> because I brought it to my attention. When you accept something, you're not focusing on it. It's not even in your attention. When you don't accept something, it's right there, bugging you. So the present moment, because we don't accept it, it bugs us. It irritates us because we're not accepting it. We look at the present moment and said, I can imagine it could be cooler now. It shouldn't be so warm. Or it's too cool. It should be warmer. So now I'm really irritated with the present temperature. But if I accepted it, I wouldn't even be aware of it. So non-acceptance of the present moment creates what? It creates me. It creates me. Or I, I should say. It creates an I who is commenting on everything, judging, opinionated, Position, protection, aggression, all in time, all trying to get to a better moment, a better position, a better place. Even death, oh, they've gone to a better place. As if to say, this present moment is hell. I can't wait to die. And the fact is, when we look at the world from the rim, the present moment is death. The present moment, which is life, is death when we live on the rim. So let's ship, let's ship, let's shift. You know, like like you're on a computer and you and you you shift the viewpoint of an object, you know, you can shift it, twirl it around. Technology, computers, is a metaphorical language for a shift in our, con in, our, in our consciousness. Do you realize that? I realize that. We created computers, technology, internet, as a metaphor that points to our imprisonment in time. In other words, 
This is why we love the internet. The internet, the cell phone, the computer, the GPS, all of that is a metaphor that liberates us from living in the ego in time. But we don't see it metaphorically, we just see it as an escape. If you see it as a metaphor, it liberates you. There's a shift. Just like you shift an object on, the, on your Photoshop or your, uh, uh, your program on the computer and you shift an object around and you look at it from different views. You have a three dimension. Shift it around. Change your viewpoint. This is a single myopic viewpoint of reality living on the realm of time, living from past to future is a Western paradigm that has brought us computers, but personally it is a limitation because it's only a single viewpoint. You know, when um, if you look at the history of art, before the Renaissance art was flat. You look at the art of the West, the Middle Ages, it was flat. There was no third dimension. Then suddenly in the Renaissance, whoa, a third dimension popped into view. And now you could look at a painting and you can make the, the disappearing point and you can make everything three dimensions. The picture's still flat, but now you see a third dimension. Something awakened. So we're looking at the world flatly here. We're looking at the world from time as a flat map, a flat world a Newtonian billiard ball world where everybody's just a billiard ball bouncing around by some external unknown force. Oh, the deep state is making us move. Or it's uh, uh, Hillary or Obama or the Jews or the Rothschilds or the communists or the terrorists or some external force is making us move around. What is it you see? Or God or the devil. Some malevolent external force is moving us billiard bars around because we can't move ourselves around. On this world, the billiard ball can only move if somebody hits it. It's a bumper car. You can't move unless some external force makes you move. A cause to your effect, you see. But that's the flat view. That's the flat view because you have no power. You're created on this view. You're determined. You have no free will. Oh, I imagine I free but when you start looking at it, uh, you can't find it. If you had free will, you wouldn't suffer. <laughs> if you had free will, you wouldn't suffer. Why would I choose suffering? If I have free will, I wouldn't choose it. Try doing that. You can't. So let's shift the focus here. Let's shift the shape and look at the wheel from this angle. So now the center, see there's no center here. In the, in, the, in the clock world, you're not at the center. In other words, if this were a metaphor of the world, you're on the rim here, running around the numbers, trying, trying to get more time. You see, you're not holding it. Now, there's a shift here, you see. When this is, a, this is a metaphor again now, so relax. When I live in the clock, I'm running around in time trying to get somewhere. Like the rabbit in the Alice in Wonderland. Hurry up now, there's not enough time. Hurry up, not enough time, you see. But when we shift to here, now I'm holding time. I'm the center. Time is at my command. I use it. It's creative time because I'm not running. A, I now am at the center. I'm at the center here when I hold time like that. So shifting here, we look now. Here's the wheel, and now there's an axis to it. You can't see the axis here. There's no center, but now there's a center, and the center is me. And here, this little, my little ego here, they're still there. My little ego is still there. This is I. And the world is its. You see, this is an I, it world. I and a bunch of its. 
but from the center I see both the I and the it, you see. So now the world is I, it. And I'm, because I'm at the center, I'm no longer the I with the it, you see. As the center, now me here, this is where our language gets screwed up. Me is the viewpoint from this location in being. I'm located, I'm talking to you from this point right here in being, in the cosmos. If I start, if I zoom out from this point, this little bed, I can do this on the internet. I can, I can Google down and I can see my house and maybe I can go into this room and maybe I could go into me right here. And then I would zoom out. Oh, there's a house, there's a room, there's a house, there's the street, there's the town, there's the state, there's the, there's America, there is the Western Hemisphere, there is the Earth, there's the Chi Galaxy. I keep zooming out, you see. I can zoom back in, you put them right back here. That's the me. And that's your me. If you look at you from your, not from where I'm looking at you, because if I look at you, you're in it. But if you look at you from me, then you can zoom out from you. So every point in being is a center that has no circumference. So every point on the grid of space-time is a center of the whole cosmos. That's the me. But then when I look at myself in the cosmos as a thing, bumping into you, talking to you, thing talking to you as a thing, that's an I it. I'm an I, you're an it. And you're an I and I'm an it. But that's here, you see. That's not the me. This is a shift. This is a bazinga. This is a satori shift. This is a what the fuck shift. This, <laughs> this is a shift to the vertical, to the, to the center of the time that doesn't move. See, see this point right here? That doesn't move. Time moves around. No, now let's end up here. We'll go to a GPS metaphor. I said that technology is a metaphor for a shift in consciousness from the rim to the center. The GPS, you go on the GPS. Compare the GPS with your wife sitting next to you with a flat map. Okay? Two different paradigms. She's got the flat map. She says there's only one way to go from here to there, and you better not screw up. You see, you got to get from X to there in time. You're in the map. You're in the world of time. But then you plug in your GPS vertical. Your your did I spell that right? Vertical. Ver. No, I didn't. Uh, so when you're in the GPS map, you are the center of the whole cosmos. And if you move, if you don't move, nothing moves. Take one inch, move, take one step, and the world shifts around you. Boom. Take one step. And no matter how you want to go from here to there, no matter how you go, you're still going there. You can't piss off the navigator. You can't make that navigator call you an idiot and say you're wrong. There's no right or wrong on the GPS map. You're always going home. You're always going to your destination because you're always at the center. No matter where you are, you're always at the center. So you can still go somewhere in the world, but while you're going somewhere in the world, you're still at the center. On the flat map, you're never at the center. So you gotta get somewhere to be in the center. But when you get there, you're not in the center. It's somewhere else. Oh, I got to get there. I went to California, and now I got to go to New York. I'm always going to it. The center is it, but we can't get to the center because the center is in me. I hope that metaphor helps a little bit, helps me. I use it all the time. 
So this is the vertical center, and if you notice, it looks like the cross. The vertical center is this to me, and the horizontal past future is time. So the picture of Christ hanging from the cross is an image of somebody trapped in time. They're hanging from the horizontal beam of duality, of time, of the suffering of time because the suffering is there because we've lost the center. So Christ is a metaphor for the joyous participation in time the joyous participation in time, and it's joyous because one is anchored in the formless center. There's no form here. Form is out here as I, it, in the world of time, you see. The center is empty, so you can't go there from the I, it you can never make your center in it because in it has form and you are the center of the world you are the world and the world is you thanks for dropping in <laughs>